Salve família de boa, bora conversar com mais um aí do Icons aqui em mais um Wild Talk. Hoje vamos falar com o Iraq Zoro, que é um dos caras que joga na Immortals e que no ano passado na Horizon Cup fez um comentário aí no Twitter falando que o Brasil não ia muito bem e tal, e acabou queimando a língua, porque o Brasil venceu dos Estados Unidos, aí o brasileiro foi lá, o brasileirinho ficou pistola e tal, ele falou de boa, pô, mas enfim, a galera foi lá e meteu o louco, então agora vamos trocar uma ideia com ele, vamos falar sobre isso também, e claro, já deixa o likezão, já se inscreve no canal e também manda pra geral, comenta aqui o que você achou da entrevista porque ajuda bastante demorou é nóis. so um first of all thank you so much Haraki for coming here you know for accepting the invite it's a huge pleasure to have you here and um, I'd like you to tell me about how you got into the Wild Rift professional scene and how it's been to compete in the game thank you for having me uh as far as how I got into the game uh, so I've always competed professionally in mobile uh esports since mm -hmm. 2000 15 the first game that i started with was a game called being glory and then I, i i moved over a few games uh along the way base base basically depending on which game was having a lot of tournaments and so on and then uh when wild rift was announced which i think maybe was summer of 2019 no or maybe 2020 either 2019 or 20 i don't remember too much but there, there was an announcement that was made by riot that wild drift was going to come out and there was a bunch of us me and my friends who have competed in previous uh mobile esports and also have played a lot of league of legends on pc when we saw that announcement we were like oh that's going to be a huge opportunity for sure because we have the background in competitive we know the game from league of legends pc and it, we just thought it would be a great fit So when the game released, uh, first it released in beta in, in Asia, then Europe, and I, I personally played in both servers, even on high ping, just to try out the game, and I really liked it. So naturally, things progressed later on. Um, the NA servers were released, and yeah, that's how it carried on. Yeah, okay, awesome. And what was it like for you to play at a shopping mall in front of people for the finals <laughs> of the WNS? I mean, had you had any LAN experience before that on these other games you said you played? Yeah, I mean, it, it was... I, I, I've had many uh, LAN tournament experiences from yeah, the previous games, but I've never played in an actual mall <laughs> like we did in the Mall of America, where it was, it was such a surreal experience because you're sitting there on stage and you see like people just walking by shopping or like you know going to grab food or wherever yeah. if, like they would in a mall and they see us and so they stop and watch or maybe come sit down in the audience it was pretty cool it was it was a first in that regard um but i think uh the way like the production team for the wns handled it was uh fairly well and it, i think it worked out well Yeah, I also think so. I mean, it was very fun to see people, exactly like you said, just stop by and be like, what the hell are these guys yeah. doing? <laughs> what the hell is Wild Rift? And I mean, it shows the game for a new spectrum of people as well. So I think this is also a very good part of it. And last and year, I'm oh, sorry, you can... You can say no, I was just going to say, and a lot of them, they recognized some parts of the game from like maybe they played League of Legends PC or maybe they even watched the Arcane shows and mm -hmm. there was a lot of posters for like Jinx, for example. I think they really tried to hammer that in. So a lot of them would walk by and they would recognize, but then they would be more intrigued because it's a new game, right? It's it's not maybe something they've known about existing, which is like the mobile version of League of Legends. And yeah, then they would be uh, interested in like checking it out and sit down. Yeah, that's how it worked out. Yeah, totally. That's that must be that must have been amazing for sure. And um, last year you didn't qualify for the Horizon Cup, but now you did to Icon. So what changed since 2021 for you and for Immortals? Yeah, I think that's a good question. Yeah, so we didn't qualify. We felt pretty short. I mm -hmm. think even though we came in second, um, I think we, you know, it, there was another team called Enemy that was very close and skilled to us, but both of us were a fair bit below a tribe who did end up qualify for Horizon. Yeah. I think what changed was, well, we had a roster change with uh, Lubmont coming in the jungle. Um, and that kind of changed the dynamic of how the team operates, of how the team plays. Lubmont is also the brother of Gume, our ADC player. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of uh, synergy. And he had played with the team previously before like it became Immortals. Um, it was a, a team called Team Guns. So... There was that roster change. Um, we also, you know, knew that Tribe had a huge advantage because they had been playing as a team for like a year before everyone else. 
uh, since like the the first uh, release of Wild Rift in Europe, they were playing as a team, preparing for the competitive. So they had a head start, and we knew that uh, uh, while we were still a new team, they were going to be better. But with time, we would build up our synergy, build up our strategies, and eventually, hopefully, become better. And you know, all all, all the all the pieces fell in the right places, and mm-hmm. it ended up um, working the way we expected. Yeah, awesome, man. And um, what's your take on the NA team's level of of gameplay, of performance in general nowadays? Well, so, I mean, I'm obviously going to be biased. <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> You're allowed to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would say, I mean, how would we, how would I describe it? Because I think that we are, we I think we are the best region in the West. Okay. I think comparatively to Europe, comparatively to Brazil, comparatively to Latin America, we are the best region. But again, I'm biased. Um, and uh, when it comes to like the Asian regions, ICA, China, Korea, and so on, I, I'm not sure how we exactly compare. I would say that maybe Korea and China possibly better than us from watching their games. But it's really hard to tell until like you, you go and you play... And we're going to be scrimming those teams. We're not really going to be able to tell. But as far as just general read on the region, I would say we're the best Western region, like, easily. Um, and I, I can't really say how we compare to the Asian teams until we would play against them. And um, what do you think the meta is going to look like? You know, because we had a lot of changes on 3.2 and then actually no tournaments to show them off. So obviously you can hide some information, but what do you think is going to change? Yeah, I there there it's still similar meta to like the previous patches. Mainly the things that have shifted out and in are like the main picks that you would prioritize. Um the the things that you would ban, the things that you would try to avoid giving the other team. Um yeah, I'm not gonna go too too in detail, but I would say that things like playing tank, bruiser topside. Uh, and then you know, heavy bot side, the mages in the mid lane, stuff like the the singe, which is like really off meta, but has become really popular recently in the mid lane. Um, yeah, I, I I don't think there is gonna be a big difference to how the game is gonna look when played in the icons comparatively to the tournaments we've seen before. It's just gonna be some picks shifting in instead of others to fill the same role and the same purpose, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. And I'm um, talking a bit about the Brazilian region now. What do you think of the Brazilian g- region in general, also in terms of gameplay and performance and all of that? Uh, I mean, I, I, so we lost them in Horizon Cup. At like NA Raw lost to them in the Horizon Cup when Travis was playing. They played against DSM. They ended up losing. So mm-hmm. there is that history uh, uh, that exists, which is like internationally they've proven to be better than us. But I think while they are still really good, I think they are better than. I would say they're definitely better than Latin America. Maybe on the same on the same level as Europe, or maybe a little bit better. Uh, and comparatively to us, I would say they're still not quite as good. But there's a lot of respect that goes to the teams, and I think they can uh, make a lot of upsets happen, and they could surprise, and they could even. Um, you know, come out and prove me wrong. And this is was uh, this was going to be exactly my last uh, my my next question because I was going to say, what do you think of the rivalry between Brazil and NA after Tribe lost one to <laughs> the TSM at the Horizon Cup? I think at the time you actually mentioned something. Or you were analy- analyzing the, the games, right? <laughs> you were an analyst. I was on the analyst. And desk, I was yeah, like, I, was I think I, I think Arakizor was the guy who said something about Brazil and received a lot of passion of Brazil let's put it this way so what do you think about this rivalry yeah I think what I what I had said at the time was on Twitter and I think um I don't really remember what I said exactly but I think I underestimated them basically yeah probably um I love the rivalry I think it's great I think I th- I, I would love for that to continue we also have a great rivalry with Europe I'm gonna love if I get the opportunity to play against those teams both in Brazil and Europe because I want to prove that we are the better region and that rivalry and even if it's not going to happen on stage just getting there and being able to scrim against them um and seeing you know who, which teams are better is going to be very exciting yeah um, do you know or do you like or do you in, uh, watch any brazilian players from any of the, the brazilian teams honestly i have not watched uh brazil 
the the qualifiers up to this tournament yet. I was planning on doing a lot of homework leading up uh, in the next few days because we're going to be traveling soon and we're going to have a week there to um, because we're in the groups, right? So there's going to be the yeah. planes happening before us. So we're not going to play until a little bit later mm -hmm. and we're going to get to see some of those teams play before us. So I was planning on doing a lot of my homework when I would get there and look at the qualifiers, look at um, how the regions are. But right now I haven't done too much. So I, I wouldn't be able to name a specific player uh, or even honestly say which teams have qualified. Let me look at the brackets quickly while I'm doing <laughs> no this. No problem I, at all. It's just to see if you knew someone from maybe, you know, watching finals or something like that. Mm -hmm. The the teams that, that have qualified for Brazil are Omega, first seed, okay. then Vivo Kid or Vivo Kid, right? Usually people from abroad call it Vivo Kid on the second seed. And then the third seed was on Liberty. Oh, okay. So Omega's mid laner suits. Uh, he's a player who played Vainglory a long time ago, um, yeah. which is the game that I started with. And he also played when Europe first released, before the Americas released. When Europe was released and we were all playing on Hyping, he was one of the other players that played with us and was high ranked like us. Um, so he's a player that, you know, that stands out to me immediately. So yeah, I'll keep an eye on him for sure. Suits for Omega. Okay, awesome. Yeah, we'll also do that because <laughs> he's been playing um, very well this, these, these last days and these last matches for sure. And now to wrap it up, I'd like you to send a final message to the Brazilian fans who will probably be watching you guys both to you know root against you maybe if you play brazil or root for you if you play someone else we don't know yeah for sure i mean uh, i appreciate the support we've received throughout the season so much because uh i think while we were winning every tournament in, in north america there were still some people doubting us and there were still some people expecting that tribe would win at the end or sentinels would win at the end and would qualify as the first seed we proved them wrong but more like for those people who doubted us we proved them wrong but more importantly the people that supported us all the way i am so uh thankful for um and <laughs> i think the only other thing there is to say is like I, I really, really hope we can prove that North America is much better than the perceived, um, you know, expectations for it from all the other regions fans. So definitely watch out for us because, yeah, I, 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 I think we are much better and I, I think we're going to be able to prove it this tournament. E tá aí, esse foi o Araxor, mano, da hora demais, gente boa também, pô, o cara tá confiante, eu acho que isso é muito importante, temos que estar tá confiante mesmo, você tem que estar tá confiante na sua região, fazer o máximo pra poder melhorar a sua região, né, evoluir a sua região, e tá certo ele, mano, tem que estar tá confiante, tem que gostar da rivalidade mesmo, eu espero que o Brasil vá melhor do que os Estados Unidos, mas vamos ver aí na sequência como que vai ser essa fita, demorou? De novo, deixa o likezão, já se inscreve, comenta aí o que você achou, e é nóis, tamo junto, valeu.